Good morning guys, MC Procrastinator here for another 2 minute video, part of the 2 minute series. If you haven't seen the 2 minute series before, check the video link below. Anyway, so this video is about electric motorcycles, now specifically focused towards one or two electric motorcycle brands. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview about that uh, and my disappointment with actually what's happening in this space. Now, how this topic came around, I was um, chatting to Jumping Jacks123 and he basically brought up the fact that the MD Augusta video that was in my last video, so if you haven't seen that MD Augusta last video, um, he brought up that, oh, I've never heard of MD Augusta before. By the way, have you ever looked into Modus? Have you ever heard of that? Go and check it out. So I decided to go and check out Modus, which is obviously not an electric motorcycle, it's really, really cool. I spent some time looking at the webpage, looking at some videos, trying to understand the brand. I thought, so where I was going with this? That just set me off on a tangent. Go, wow, well, you know what? I remember when I first got on a bike, so I was looking at all these different things, and then, you know, every two, three years, I'd look to see what's coming out, what's new, and, you know, electric vehicles start coming into the equation, etc. So I thought, well, I actually, I remember this uh, motorcycle brand, Mission Motorcycles, it was called, but I couldn't remember the time, so I Google Electric Motorcycle. Ah, oh, there we go, Mission Motorcycle. Oh, boom, great. Watched the, uh, I, I found Jay Leno's channel, watched a thing about him reviewing, etc., and how amazing it was. And then I found the other one where um, they pull up and they go, hey, right, um, so these racers that ride normal bikes every day, jump on this, what do you think of it? And they come, oh, I'm not sure it's electric. They jump on it and ride it and it's like fantastic. By the way, there's a picture here. I'm just gonna stick a picture up here for you, okay? And um, they were like, oh, actually, that's amazing. It's more better than we thought. Anyway, so as I work through the videos, I go on back into Google, Mission Motorcycles, filed for bankruptcy in 2015. Wow. Stop right there. So they went from 2009 to 2015, 2012, they won the TT, sorry, they came fourth in the TT on a long endurance. Um, some American racer rode it, 33 uh, miles, I think it was, and they came fourth. That's a pretty big feat. And um, yeah, that was a real shame because they're no longer here anymore. So I was like, what happened? So pretty much the timeline was this. It went from 2009, prototype, kind of out there. Everybody got excited. People put $5,000 down to secure the vehicle. They had $9 million worth of funding from an investment giant. And then it just started to slowly disappear. Then they cut shop on being able to produce the motorbikes and putting them to market and they decided to take the technology that they derived and sell that and support other electric motorcycle manufacturers etc with their technology selling the technology available to help them design concept vehicles etc etc and they just disappeared. So it's a real real shame okay and it's not the first thing of new technology, revolutionary technology, great ideas and um, falling by the wayside to just get soaked up and absorbed into the bigger companies because that's usually where it ends up right. But let's think about some of the things that they did with the bike right so the electric motor that's, that's the key thing obviously electric motor so there's no gears okay actually there is electric motor out there that does provide gears so what they decide was so that's a good point so what they decided to do was they wanted to design the bike so that it was suited towards the electric vehicle that had the appeasement of a motorcycle look right so they weren't they were designing the bike based solely on performance and maximizing uh, the usefulness of the motorcycle as opposed to trying to make it inherently right like a uh, normal pedal motor motorbike, okay, which was a really, really good idea. So it's no clutch. You can imagine that, no clutch. That must be really awkward. But, of course, the great thing about electric motor is you've got full torque all the time. Um, oh, and one other thing. This had basically a spaceship front end and um, HUD system that was linked up to your internet would provide all sorts of analytics and information back to both the user and to the internet to so record them, analyze them. It was pretty cool. Anyway, so they had all in suspension, they had Brembo's, they had the battery which basically it slots down the middle of the bike so it come all the way down here and that was the equivalent of having the all the weight uh, distributed on the bike correctly so that basically you could do all the great turns and stuff, right? And then of course, you know, all that work, all that effort, all that possibility gone. There is hope though. So I decided to look up and find out what electric motorcycle manufacturers are left. So there's a thing called uh, Lightning Motorcycles. They call it the LS218. It's I don't think it's as good looking as the other bike. The LS218 doesn't quite have that technology, but it's the same concept. It's got an engine, uh, sorry, it's got an electric motor in the back, it's got the battery situated here. And I don't think it looks quite as good, but it's 218 brake horsepower. That's what the LS218 stands for. Now these guys are in production. They're selling vehicles, um, $30,000. I don't know how far that will go. I don't know how long they'll last because obviously there's a lot of other brands and other companies out there doing electric motorcycles. 
Now, I think the interesting thing here is you look at what happens between cars and motorcycles in general, right? Cars get the technology and it filters through into motorcycles. You know, usually anywhere between five and ten years that technology comes through into motorcycles, okay? So cars get it, uh, you know, like you should probably argue top end cars get it, that filters down into your sort of usual passenger uh, average car price, blah 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 blah. Then that filters into your bikes, top end bikes, and then it filters down. So it's just like this kind of hierarchical thing of technology filtering down because bikes always seem to be the last ones to get it, right? So you take that in mind and then you go, well, okay, so we've got huge drivers going on now with regards to electric um, cars. You know, you've got uh, Elon Musk doing some great things. He's really revolutionizing the market because he's creating a huge amount of competition. It's almost like a space race, right? You know, when the US said, right, we're going to the moon, which is like, no, we're going to do that. And all sorts of money gets chucked at it because everybody wants to be succeeded. Everybody knows that the person that comes out on top, the person that wins that race is the one that's going to get all the money and going to get all the goods from that, the good goods in return. And the same thing is for the uh, motor car. Elon Musk, I think, understands that. He thinks the driver for being able to motivate the world for change is to put everything into one go. You are going to see, we're going to make you change. And that's what I love about Elon Musk. However, the cars will change, but I think motorcycles will be a, be a long time to come up. And I think that's the problem. The time at the moment is for cars. I don't think the time at the moment is for motorcycles. Okay? They're just not succeeding at the minute. I think before motorcycles start coming into fruition in the electric vehicle market, it will probably be the next five to ten years. Probably more the latter. Let me know your thoughts, guys. This is another two-minute video. It's part of my two-minute series. MC Procrastinator out.